We got a nice little marinade going in on this guy from the butcher box that I showed you guys. Getting the, the pan hot right now to give it a nice little sear. All right, maybe not super pretty, but it smells really good and it tastes really good. Seven ounces actually of the pork in there for a whopping 50 grams of protein, which is nice. A cup of roasted garlic cauliflower mash and then the veggies that I roasted before, which is zucchinis, onions, and mushrooms for today. So, yum, 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 yum. 50 grams in one meal, I will take it. Seriously kind of loving having my skincare in the fridge again. Let's do problem and acne skin because I still got this thing growing on my face. Although it has gotten a little better, I don't know. But my mask is nice and cold. And just finishing my coffee and then we're gonna get started with today's workout. Definitely under eight yesterday too, so I just decided to switch it up. Yesterday was my rest day and we're gonna do back and buys this morning, no big deal. So today's gonna be really row heavy <laughs> um, for back and buys. We got some curls in there. We're gonna do a lot of work with the bar and then we're going to move into some dumbbell work at the end probably do a little tri set um it's like a super set but with three exercises instead of two i'm gonna skip i'm gonna skip on the foundation today but i'm gonna just do a little bit of makeup get myself together and then we'll jump into this workout like a half an hour or so so early guys i like working out early it just i don't know it sets the tone for the whole rest of the day for me all right love bugs let's get into this workout it is a pull day for me today so think actions that are pulling weight or resistance towards your body and those pulling motions are going to be back and bicep focus so when you hear people talk about a pull day or like a pull day push day split a pull day is just your back and bicep focus day. That's all that that means. I started off with some dynamic stretching. I feel like I've been complaining about severe neck soreness or pain or whatever for two or three months now, and it's still been like an everyday occurrence. So honestly, I'm thinking that there's definitely some inflammation going on, like the top of my my shoulders, my neck, like that base area, all of that right there is very sore. Um, likely also because I've started this really bad habit of cracking my neck, which, yeah, it's terrible, right? I know. Um, but it's like this vicious cycle because the crack relieves the tension in the moment. And then like later on, it just gets worse and worse by the day. So that, it's been like a focus problem area for me lately. But I'm really zeroing in on diet for now to try to like combat the inflammation. But we can talk about that in another video if you guys want. Um, after my warm up, I'm just getting into like my bigger movements first. So I'm gonna start with my rows and I'm just using the bar all across uh, for this first week. I'll start adding weight as the weeks go on for progressive overload, but I'm starting in with an upright row. Then we're going over to the bent row and then the seated cable rows. And I, I think I stopped mid-workout to go on a little rant about the fact that all these rows that we're doing. So I'll let you guys hear that in vivo y en directo from me <laughs> in the moment. Um, in the last vlog, I think I shared a body update with you guys. And it's actually been a couple of weeks. So I've definitely seen some growth since that video and this video, which was filmed like the same weekend. So it's been a little bit, but let me know in the comments if you guys want like a physique update or if I should give it a couple more weeks so that the difference is like even more, bam, wow, like out there, you know, noticeable. <laughs> I don't know, I get very excited when I start seeing like the tiniest muscle growth, guys, because you know, training is work, man. Even if you enjoy the fitness lifestyle like I do, it doesn't, devalue the work and commitment that's involved so yeah celebrate your wins whenever you notice them because you deserve it <laughs> all right i want to take a quick beat because we started with upright rows or standing rows um we just did bent over rows and seated cable rows they all end in the word row so <laughs> It sounds like I'm saying row like my name, but R-O-W, right? So like, whatever, I wish it would have been a different workout now because I don't want to keep saying row. 
Not so fun fact, every time my family wanted to like tease me when I was a little girl, they would sing that song. The point of this intermission is that I've been coming across this a lot with my clients lately. They'll see just the end of the name of the exercise and they'll be like, oh, well, you have me doing like the same exercise three different times. One time I'm standing and one time I'm sitting and like, what the hell? Why am I doing the same exercise like for half of my workout? And it's not quite the same. Those variations are going to, yes, hit the same muscle or muscle group, but hit it in slightly different ways. So for example, when you're coming back with the bent over row, you want to like picture like you're rowing a boat or something like that and you're pulling towards your belly button. So you're hitting your back and you're going in like a back and up motion. However, when you're seated and you're like leaned back a little bit and you're pulling the rope and you're kind of opening slightly, it's that same kind of pull or row, but as you come back and like slightly down and that opening at the end as well, you're hitting it in a slightly different way. So you're still getting those same muscle or muscle groups with the different variations, just like there's a million different kinds of squats you can do. So that's kind of the same concept. I know I've noticed that people get confused when they see an exercise has the same or a similar name. Don't get too caught up in like names, you know, that's just more so like for categorizing and things like that. You have to do like all of these variations, um, you know, not always in one workout, but throughout your week to really create a well-defined muscle and like hit it from every, every angle and use it on like the most basic level besides bodybuilding or body sculpting or whatever, but to use and train your muscle in every way that it functions, in every direction that it's supposed to function to keep your body moving optimally. Very well said, Ro. Having some context helps things to make better sense, or to me at least, so I hope that that helped you guys too. Continuing on uh, from my endless rowing moment right there, I jumped into some barbell bike curls. I finished off the workout with a tri set of rear delt flies, dumbbell curls, and dumbbell rows. I kept the weight really low for all of these, and I just did five reps of each back to back to back for five total sets. This was actually a sick finisher. I had to take a while rest in between the last three sets, like five to 10 minutes, um, because I was getting like just spent. And I just really, I don't know, I wanted to finish the five sets because I made a chart with the boxes, like the space for five sets. So I don't know, honestly, I'm just kind of like that. If I just had to finish it to fill in the boxes. So I just rested a lot in between, take your time. I was definitely feeling jello-y <laughs> when I finished, but after an hour and a meal, I felt actually really great after this workout. All right, I'm gonna make my post-workout shake. So some creatine, but I am really hungry right now, so I'm also gonna get a little snack in the meantime for my post-workout form, my post-workout protein. I still use Formula One, and I'm actually doing a scoop and a half. I've been doing half a scoop of ignition. So basically, this is like fast digesting glucose or like carbs, basically really easy to digest carbs. You want to get carbs back into your system directly after your workout. So I always include this in my post-workout shake. This is from First Form as well. We got a nice little cup full of powder. Look at all that goodness. And as for my snack right now, actually I think, I think I'm gonna do, I got fresh mozzarella yesterday, so I think I'm gonna do some slices of mozzarella and tomato. I'll show you guys when I prepare it, but. Oh, make sure you tighten your your shakers. Ugh, shit, BRB. All right, that's Dutch huffing in the background. If it sounds crazy, she's, she's not okay, but like, that's what she does because of what she has. Breathe, Bubba, because I have food here, so she's running around and she's not supposed to be because you're like almost 17 years old. Calm down, you have a heart condition but like you're a dog and she smells the pork and <laughs> that's the only thing that matters in the world. Oh, 
to be a dog. It must be so nice. I just got back from yoga like 20 minutes ago, got some things together. You guys know my biggest problem is under eating. I literally will forget to eat. And that's not to say like I was a stick anorexic skinny, you know, 90 pounds. I wasn't. I was holding on to weight even though I wasn't eating or like having one meal. So as of lately, um, the beginning of this year, again, have not really been eating. I'll have like one meal a day because I forget or I'm stressed or there's other people I'm taking care of and I'm focused on, you know, all these people's surgeries and appointments and things. So I told you guys, this is going to be the hardest part of this three weeks is actually Dutch. Really, I'm going to need you to take like a slow breath. Like, inhale with me now. Come on, girl. No, no jump. <laughs> you know what? Let's do this. Because it just kills me to hear her. Anyway, all I had so far this morning was my coffee. Come here now. Why are you jumping over there if I'm over here? I moved the food, Dutch. I moved the food. The food is here now. Oh, oh, there you go. Maybe if you relax, I'll give you a little bit. the joy of having just lights all over the place. I know this is like a temporary apartment and I don't really care for it that much, but the space that I've created like for my work, I do particularly like, like, you know, it's nice. This is probably the nicest, biggest YouTube area I've had <laughs> um, ever. I really don't appreciate this enough. I have like a faux walk-in closet that I always wanted, a faux beauty room desk area filming that I always wanted, a faux mini home gym, a faux spiritual sensor in like a little mini compartment, you know, like a little mini size, but I still, I have everything. Huh. I'm suddenly much more appreciative of my space. Baba, I came down here for you to relax. Okay, all right, all right, all right, okay, you gotta come down. Okay, okay, stop. <laughs> okay, baby. So, anyway, I was talking about how I know eating enough for gains is going to be the hardest struggle for me. So, I think I want to kind of do a whole separate video on this for my main channel. Like, I'm just giving her little tiny bits. <laughs> Don't eat my finger. So if you guys would like that on the main channel, I'll do that. But here on the vlog, you're going to actually see me struggling. And the whole point of me bringing this up is because right now, I just got back from yoga and literally only going to be home for like a half an hour before heading out again because today is one of the days that my mom has appointments but this is like her post-surgery appointment so I was sitting there and I was thinking about it I'm like oh no she's probably gonna want to go pick up the laundry after and then go she wants to stop by the pharmacy to pick up her medicine and like all these other things that she's gonna add on that she wants me to do for her and I realized like if I don't eat now I didn't even eat yet I had my coffee this morning which you guys know my little mix that I do for that um and then I went to yoga and I came back and I was about to be out the door again for like another at least four to six hours. And it hit me. I was like, let me eat something now. This is definitely some big tip for me. Eat whatever, whenever. Like I do not abide by I need breakfast, it's breakfast food or, you know, it's the first thing in the morning or who's going to eat like a freaking pernil at <laughs> like breakfast time. But... I had, I still have a shit ton of pork left over, so I've kind of been running this for like every meal, literally. So I have four ounces of pork right here. My mom roasted up some sweet potatoes yesterday, like a big tray of them, so running those leftovers too. So I'm just gonna down this right now because I need to put something, even though I'm not really that hungry, although I should be because I have not eaten yet. So it, it's kind of like a mental thing to get over too because I'm not really hungry. But I know I have to eat. And if I don't start now, there's no way I'm going to eat enough. Oh, sorry. I guess you could have that. In the rest of the day, depending what time I get home. It's just, if you guys are like me and it's, it's either you forget or you get busy or stressed or you're just not hungry and it's hard for you to get enough, you definitely have to plan ahead. 
Like, there's no other way around it. I literally have like eight minutes left to scarf all of this down. Um, whatever I don't finish, I'm just gonna throw it in a little, like a paper plate bowl and take it with me in the car because I have to eat this. When we think about what we have to eat and what we want to eat, a lot of the times we think about like, oh, like, I want to eat a donut, but I shouldn't because it's not good for me. I should eat something better, blah, blah, blah. But for me, it's like, I don't want to eat. I'm not really hungry, but like, I have to eat. <laughs> so it's just a question of getting the nutrients in my body and trying like not to think about it too much. My mom always used to say to me, um, like, Tienes que comer, se te va a cerrar el estómago. So basically, like, you have to eat or your stomach's gonna close. But it's pretty much just like if you don't eat a lot, you kind of get used to not eating a lot. And if you eat a lot or overeat, then you just get used to eating more kind of thing. And then you're more hungry. I don't know if that's true or like an old wives tale. But I do know that, oh, Dutch. She just pooped in her diaper. But I do know that over time, and especially since I'm training harder now, I will hopefully just be naturally hungry and it'll be a little bit easier. Let me go change the dog's diaper. And there is my point proven. It is 5.05 p.m. and I am just getting home. So thank God I did eat before I left. But I'm going to, maybe I'm gonna make a, I think I'm gonna make a fruit smoothie with protein. Yeah, I wanna try something new. No, I was playing Fortnite. It gets intense. I want to try something I've never done before um, and I need something quick. So I found this in storage. I'm pretty sure it's expired. Oh, not not too bad. February. Okay. You guys don't eat expired anything, but I really don't care. So we're going to give this a try mainly because I'm going to make a fruit smoothie and I always get chocolate protein, but they sent this to me. And this is vanilla. I would never buy vanilla on my own, but I feel like vanilla would go better with a fruit smoothie. So we're gonna do that. Let's see. All right, let's try this. So we got fancy with the glass. All my wine glasses are in storage. This is all I have. So in here, the protein I already showed you guys. I put two scoops of my OptiGreens. I put a banana, some peanut butter, and a bunch of strawberries. I have actually never put protein in a fruit smoothie before. <clears throat> I know, right? What kind of fitness influencer am I? The kind that would rather eat a steak. Hmm. What if I don't like it? This guy came out like really thick boy. Oh, that doesn't look... Okay, I feel like I'm making it worse. I am definitely making this worse. Wow, that does not look appetizing at all. Oh, there's peanut butter in there too. Did I mention peanut butter? I think I'm gonna throw this back in the blender because it, oh, there we go. Now we're starting to combine. It's getting a little smoother. All right. Mm. All right, it's not that bad actually. So it tastes like my smoothie normally tastes with like a hint of something else. Doesn't really taste vanilla-y, but mm, not terrible. Probably wouldn't do this again unless I'm like really in a pinch like I am today. And on top of it, in like an hour, I have to leave again because today Noelle has therapy every week. Um, so I'm supposed to be doing legs. I guess we're going to do that at like 9 o'clock at night, but you know. We'll get it done. All right, a little snack too for good measure because it's getting late and I have a feeling I'm not, oh my God, I'm not gonna eat much more. So what was that 4.6, what am I looking for? Fresh mozzarella. And ounces, that is. 23 grams of protein, yes. Mm, I'm already over on my fat for the day. So I need to like actually look at what I'm following here on this LifeSum app because I kind of set it a long time ago at a tomato and I don't know what I'm at. And it's kind of like, I don't know if it has me like carb cycling or something because it seems like 
it's changing every day. Maybe I should update my progress too. So, oh, I'm on a four day streak, woohoo. My current weight is, wow, my highest weight using this app, I was at 149 pounds at my heaviest. Let's update, 132.6. Doesn't matter, just to have like an idea. All right, I gotta eat. I gotta, <laughs> I need more hours. Mm. Mm. Still one of the best snacks ever invented.